Hi there, this is Chris Kellop with 123Muse. Let's take a look at our updated Easy RSS. Now, first of all, let's go into why we've updated it. Well, obviously we like to move things along um, with our widgets and improve them as we go along. But the big reason for this is that Google recently switched off completely their RSS feed parsing API. So those got completely switched off. So that left us with a situation where we had people with an RSS feed widget that was now switched off. So we've completely written the widget uh, anew and from scratch. So let's take a look at it. So I'm just going to open up just a standard Muse page, nothing special about it. And I'm going to use the fluid width. Let's go into the page itself. And then in my libraries, I've already installed the widget, but I'm just going to do a search for easy. And there we go, easy RSS2, and we're just going to drag it onto the page. Now, if you've used the RSS feed widget before, then you will have remembered that there was textiles that came with it and some other bits and pieces. Well, what we've done this time is we've included everything that you need in inside the widget. So it's, it's very straightforward and just very, super fast to get up and, uh, up and running. So now we've dragged it on the page, we can see that straight away um, our widget has um, gone off and got the, the content that it needed um, from the RSS feed and has rendered this uh, three column and two row um, layout. Let's take a look at the widget options. Oh, one other thing, you'll notice here that there's also the RSS feed subscribe button already there. So if we take a look, the basic functionality, we've made it really straightforward to just get up and running. You've got your RSS feed and how many posts you want to put into the, the feed at any one time. That's basically it to get started. Let's take a preview of this. And we can see that in the page here, we can see our articles are all rendered onto the page nicely. And we've also added complete um, fluid width responsive features into it. So as we scale the page, we can see that we've got a three column layout. Now, as these columns get narrower to the point where they're not comfortable to read, we switch to a two column layout. And as we go all the way down to mobile, we switch to a single column layout. And that's without you having to do anything, no breakpoint control or anything else. So if we just, uh, let's just switch on the breakpoints and just make our page infinitely scalable. Um, we can see there that the same is happening again. We've got our mobile, we've got our tablet kind of layout, and then we go into the full width layout and everything is going to fit full screen as well. So everything moves nicely. You'll also notice that the um, articles uh, below each row um, are all set up neat as well. So that's using a flex box so that you've got really nice um, layout for the articles as well. Now let's have a look at the advanced options. So that's the basic options. Actually, before we look at the advanced options, let's just deal with the typography on the page as well. So with the, the typography, you can see that we're using currently, we're using, I think this is an Ingra font. Uh, that's because we've um, already applied a style to it, but let's see what we can do. If we go into our text here, and you can see that Ingra Lite is applied, let's go ahead and change it to Times. And we'll just go to times, uh, let's go to, oh, well, let's, yeah, let's go to just straightforward times. Now you'll notice that everything has been updated. So we've got a single font choice and everything matches up straight away. So that's really useful as well, so that you um, you don't have to mess around with any styles. You can just apply a style straight away to it. Let's just undo that. Now, what about the hyperlinks? Because we can see that before we get into the advanced features, the hyperlinks are just picking out the standard um, HTML, blue, uh, purple, and so on for hyperlinks. Well, we can change those as well. And um, again, rather than putting this all into the widget, we're using Muse's built-in hyperlink control. So if with the widget selected, let's go into our hyperlink control and let's just change these colors. So I'm going to change this to a blue for normal. I'm going to change it to a, uh, let's change it to this uh, green here for hover. Visited, we'll have the blue again. And then active, we'll just set that to whatever the, it inherits. We can also change the um, whether the 
type is bold or not because this is a link so we can control that there so just to refresh this let's just go like this and that just forces the widget to refresh so let's just wait a second for that to refresh and there you have it now we can see if we go into preview we can see now that we have um, all of our text and we have our hyperlinks are now uh, matching the the type of the hyperlink styles that we chose in Muse. So we'll, we'll leave that there. We're quite happy with that. Let's go into the advanced features. So I'm going to click on the advanced and we can see now that we have a whole slew of controls. First of all, we have typography. So we can change the alignment of the, um, of the content. So we can do right, left and justified. So I'm going to put it, oh, let's just try the justified. And then let's put it back to left. So I'm happy with that. We can change the headline size. So let's just drop that down to say 1.6. And we can also change the um, space underneath the headline as well. So we can change that. Now we've set it up to be what we feel is the most vis visually um, correct layout for these articles however you can change them how and where you wish but the the standard setup should be pretty good we can change the text color we can sh switch the author off so if you don't want to show the author we can switch that off and um, we can also change the style of the author so we can change the the text size the font style whether it's normal or italic and the color we can show the date and similar things there. We can change, we can switch the date off and we can change the, the size, the, um, whether it's italic and it's color. Then we come to our layout. Now, what we've done with the, um, the layout is for mobile, it will always go to a single column. Okay. So it forces it into a single column. That's best for mobile. For a tablet, it will always uh, unless you've selected a single column for, for desktop, it will always go from a three column to a two column and so on. So that you, the layout always looks good in whichever device. But for a desktop, you can choose whether you want a single column or you can go for two columns or the three column split. So whichever feels the most comfortable, looks the most aesthetically pleasing for you, you can do that. The other thing that we have in this section in the layout is also the space underneath the article. So if we set that to, let's say 100, we can see that we have a lot more space under the article there. Let's just change that to 1.6 again. So yeah, um, let's pop that back to 50. And then the characters to show. Now, with this, this is how many characters to show overall. So let's just set that to, let's say, 200, so half of those. And you'll notice that the preview of the article is a lot shorter, so you can you can control how much of your content is actually showing. I'm going to put that back to 400, because, again, we felt that the 400 mark was about the most aesthetically pleasing to lead people into the article. Then we have the um, show the button, so we can switch the button off, and then we'll just have the uh, the hyperlink will be the, the still the whole element is is uh, clickable, but um, you can do away with the button, and we can also switch off this RSS feed. Now the RSS feed icon here uses this link, so we've got we've put the RSS feed URL in twice. This this is because. This one here is being encoded in such a way to make it useful within the JavaScript. And this is a direct link that we're using with the icon itself. So you need to put that in twice if you want to use the icon. So um, if we switch that off, you'll see that it's just plain vanilla without the RSS icon. But we thought that that was a useful feature to put in straight away. So when you drag it onto the page, it's all ready to go with your RSS feed icon and everything. I'm going to switch the buttons back on and the RSS feed back on and I'm going to close down the advanced panel and you'll notice that we have this button panel here. Now I've put lots of controls in for this button so that you can pretty much do whatever you want. So but we, we start off with this pill style button. But let's go to a, a flat square button instead. So I'm going to choose the button color to be this blue. I'm going to leave the button hover color the same. I'm going to choose the text color 
to be white and I'll leave the text hover color to be white as well. I'm going to use uh, the, um, the text sizes in EM so that's um, whatever the um, basic height of the of the text on the page that's classed as one em so your main paragraph text if that's 12 pixels then that's one em if you go up to um two ems then that would be 24 pixels because it's twice the amount of them so if you're not sure how ems work ha um, there's tons of information but that's just basically it we just find ems a lot easier to work with proportionally uh, especially when you're dealing with um uh, with fluid widths and just visually it works better in this particular situation. Okay, so overall padding of the button. So that's how much space is around the button here. And then we also have additional side padding. So if we just set that to zero, you would notice that our button look okay, but they do need a bit more padding around them. So let's, um, let's put, if we put 30 in there, you see that the buttons look a lot neater. So then we have our corner radius. So let's set that to zero. So we've got a nice square button. And we don't need any border on this. So I'm going to set to none and we'll leave those colors. Um, we'll leave those colors apply to the border colors on hover. So let's have a look at this now. And we can see we have these nice square buttons now. Everything's working nicely still. Great, so we've got our nice, our nice buttons, click an article and straight out to the article. Okay, so everything's working great. And then finally, we have um, this one here, positioning. Now, <clears throat> this is to do with the button, but as you can see, it says inherit at the moment. So at the moment, the button will inherit the um, alignment of it, the actual article preview itself. But if we switch it to let's say right, we can then override that and have our button to the left or to the right, regardless of what. So let's say, for instance, we have that set to the right, but we wanted our um, our actual article previews to be centered, then we can override that there. But usually just leave it to inherit and then it will inherit the um, alignment will inherit the alignment of the preview itself. So that's pretty much it for this widget. I'm just going to show you as well, just that this is an important feature. Um, and it might seem something that's obvious, but this is um, one of the th struggles that you have with widgets in Muse is sometimes when they're dynamic sizes, they don't always push the content below them down. So let's just put a block there. Let's preview this. And we can see we have this block here. And as we scale the page, it's going to push all of your content down below it. So any content below this block. So that's uh, another um, improvement that we've made because sometimes widgets where they've got dynamic um, scaling and sizing, sometimes they don't work, but that's just to show you that that works perfectly well. So that's the RSS feed widget. Now it should work with pretty much any RSS feed. However, there is a caveat to all of this. This works with most RSS feeds. RSS feeds are, should be validated through the RSS feed validator, which is on W3C website. However, this can only handle the content that goes into it. So if your RSS feed does not have an author in the RSS feed, then it can't show the author. Um, if your RSS feed has a ton of gobbledygook in the, um, in the content, well, it's going to show that as well. So the RSS feed widget is only as good as the data that's put into it. So um, that, I'm saying that because um, we have in the past had people wondering why they were thinking that the widget was broken, but it wasn't the widget that's broken. It's just the content going into it wasn't um, a proper, uh, wasn't a fully 100% validated RSS feed. And so, um, as I said, the parser, the RSS parser that this is, um, can only handle and can only output what's put into it. It's not a blog, it's an RSS feed. So we hope you find this widget useful and super fast to get your client's content or your content on your page from pretty much any um, valid RSS feed online. And um, we would 
We're really glad that we were able to update this for everybody because this is a very popular widget. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.